A reading from the first book of Kings. The queen of Sheba, having heard of Solomon's fame, came to test him with subtle questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a very numerous retinue and with camels bearing spices, a large amount of gold and precious stones. She came to Solomon and questioned him on every subject in which she was interested. King Solomon explained everything she asked about, and there remained nothing hidden from her that he could not explain to her. When the queen of Sheba witnessed Solomon's great wisdom, the palace he had built, the food at his table, the seating of his ministers, the attendance and garb of his waiters, his banquet service, and the burnt offerings he offered in the temple of the Lord, she was breathless. The report I heard in my country about your deeds and your wisdom is true, she told the king. Though I did not believe the report until I came and saw it with my own eyes, I have discovered that they were not telling me the half. Your wisdom and prosperity surpass the report I heard. Blessed are you, your men, blessed those servants of yours, who stand before you always and listen to your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, whom it has pleased to place you on the throne of Israel. In his enduring love for Israel, the Lord has made you king to carry out judgment and justice. Then she gave the king 120 gold talents, a very large quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did anyone, anyone bring such an abundance of spices as the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Verum Domini. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just man tells of wisdom, and his tongue utters what is right. The law of his God is in his heart, and his steps do not falter. The, mouth of the, just the salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress, and the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. Dominus Vabiscum, et cum spiritus tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Marcum, Gloria Dei Domine. 
Jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. When he got home away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, Are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and passes out into the latrine? Thus he declared all foods clean. But what comes out of the man, that is what defiles him. From within the man, from his heart, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. Verbum Domini And a week from today, we'll begin Ash Wednesday. Then, commence, then the 40 days of Lent will commence. And as we know, Lent is, of course, a time of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. But really, out of the prayer, fasting, and almsgiving is that there, we, we do this so that we can have some interior reform, so that we can, we can, be, we can be changed from within. And today, the saint we celebrate, Saint Colette of Corby, she knows all about reform. Jesus also speaks to us about what's within. So there's a lot to be learned today, and much that Saint Colette and Jesus has to say. So here we go from Saint Colette. You know, she was was born around the year 1380. You know, and as a young woman, or very young girl, I should say, she was drawn to religious life. She had such an admiration of nuns and sisters and how they prayed and the charity that they do. Well, as she moved into her teenage years, she had lost both her parents. And they entrusted her to the care of the, ben the local Benedictine Abbey. So there she remained, and eventually she became a third order Franciscan. She did this for about four years, living as a hermit, doing what she could to live a very austere and penitential life, but also a life focused on charity, doing good for others. So while she was living this life, of, of penance as a third order hermit, St. Francis appeared to her. St. Francis told her that she should reform the second order of poor Claire, which, which are the poor Claires. At first she was a little hesitant. She you know, kind of thought about it. She became blind for like three days, you know, until she says, okay, I will do this. And then everything started to work in her favor to begin uh, this re re reforming of the second order, the poor Clares. And, you know, that was only maybe a few hundred years after uh, St. Francis and St. Clare lived. But the order had, was not living up to what it was originally intended to be. So she then began to start this, 
but of course with the permission of the bishop and all that. And people, women, young women, uh, found interest in this reform movement of the poor Clares. So here they come from all over the place. She ended up opening about 18 monasteries. You know, and then re really the, the, the original intention is to be poor like Jesus. You know, poverty of spirit, you know, poverty of lifestyle. And as a result of this, you know, she herself, who, yes, yeah, she was very prayerful, very penitential, but also very charitable. And so she gave time to people, you know, people who, who were not sisters and even those within the convent. You know, she was known to give very uh, wise counsel. Uh, also, the Lord did many miracles through her. So what we see from her life is we see somebody who was very prayerful, very penitential, but yet very charitable. Okay. And this should be an inspiration for all of us. Now, here uh, we look at the gospel today, and Jesus speaks to us about what's inside of us. You know, and you know, none of us has arrived. None of us is perfect. You know, we all have something to work on. And Jesus is telling us that it's not so much what comes into a person, but what comes out of them is what defiles them, what really says who they are. And Jesus, of course, lists uh, a number of, of sins. You know, right here it says unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, and folly. Now, all, the, all these things he lists. And you know, when we, when, we, when we think about it, we think, well, I don't have any of those things, you know, but what's coming out of us? You know, yeah, you know, and the, the, the path to holiness, becoming more Christ-like, it is a process over time, you know, but what remains there? Yeah, many of us, we've had conversions and transformations, and we should still be transforming, you know, we still, still should be becoming holier. No, that's the goal. But to help us in this, it's always good to do an examination of conscience. You know, whether, um, you know, every day, sometimes some people do it twice a day. We don't have to be really scrupulous about it, but it's just to see what we need to work on. You know, what, what's, what's really coming out of us is, is there, any, is there any hate coming out of me? Any type of sin, like as Jesus mentions here? Well, what, come, what comes to the root of this? When we start looking at roots here, Jesus mentions, first of all, evil thoughts. What are we thinking? You know, he says that, that this, all of this starts from the heart. You know, in, in the heart, you know, as, as Scripture tells us, when, when, the, when the Bible speaks about the heart, it is that place where, where the will is, where our motivations are, and what, what drives us to do things. So yeah, we could have evil thoughts, but what is what is there in the heart? Are are these e what's 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 right there? Are these are are there any kind of evil there? What motivates us? You know what what is what is so this is what truly comes out of us. It starts from evil thoughts. There you go. You know we think about okay our actions, but also our speech as well. What do we say? You know. See, ultimately, as we approach Lent, what we want is we want a clean and pure heart. Yeah, we need to do our prayer. We need to, do, uh, we, we need to abstain. We need to fast. All of these sacrifices are necessary. But they should help us to conform to Jesus Christ, to become more Christ-like, as what we see from St. Colette. Yeah, she started this great reform of of the poor Claire's, but she had to be reformed from within herself. You know, she had, it had to start with her, you know, with her, with her own personal walk with God, her own prayer life. And then from there, you know, as, as she was working on, on this and committed to become a holier person, more Christ-like, then that was her time to go out and start the reform. But it I'd always start, it, it began with her, with her own decision, her own work. Then God used that. 
So for us, you know, this is what we need to pray on as we prepare for Lent. This is what can I do to become more holier? What do I need to sacrifice? What do I need to stop doing? What is going to help me not to have so many evil thoughts, but thoughts of goodness and peace? There are many things. Reading the, the scriptures, meditating on the life of Jesus, you know, taking his words and trying to make them our own. You know, reading, church teaching, the lives of the saints, committing ourselves to prayer, maybe even going to adoration once or twice a week or trying to get in an, uh, a daily mass on, a, on an extra day or something. You know, these are all things. Or starting the rosary. You don't have to, have to start with a whole rosary. Maybe start with one decade at a time and build up over the weeks. You know, but, but something. What is going to lead us to be more Christ-like? This is what we should take to our prayer. And, you know, the Holy Spirit will inspire you. I mean, don't, don't kill yourself. You know, that, remember, this is the gradual thing. This is to become holier. We don't want to become grouchier. You know, we want to become more Christ-like. Because what does Jesus call us to? To be a light out there. A light that spreads His light through His love. So may the Lord... The Holy Spirit, inspire us now. May lead us to prayer so that we may be directed toward a very holy Lent so that we may rise in the glory of God, spreading his charity with generosity. God bless you all.